We're going to look at Psalms chapter 119. And we will read verse 71. Now this verse is very encouraging. A lot of people get discouraged about making mistakes. But you got to learn to live through life through mistakes. That God can still use you. All right, I want to encourage you with that aspect. I don't want people to get discouraged. What did the Bible say? It is good, at verse 71, <clears throat> it is good for me that I have been afflicted. Right. Why? That I might learn thy statutes. Here we go. Now what people want to do, do you know how many people like to run away? They like to run away from their problems. How many people, they want to run away from the mistakes that they've made? When you make mistakes, what are the symptoms after you make the mistake? It's guilt. It's shame. You feel so embarrassed about it. It's fear. And it's also avoiding. You're trying to avoid it. So you run away. That's why a lot of people, for example, will not be willing to volunteer to take, uh, take care of some duties in the church. Do you know why? They're afraid of making mistakes. Do you know how many people I met are afraid to preach and teach? Didn't you know I was afraid to preach and teach? I know that's hard to believe, but yeah, I was afraid to preach and teach. My family still has the first recording of my first preaching, and I made so many mistakes. Oh, I want to see it. No, you're not going to see it. <laughs> For my eyes only. For my eyes only, not yours. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. All right, you're going to see me at my best right here. I'm not going to make mistakes on this one. No, I might. You never know. But point is this. The point is, is that I would not be able to minister to you today. I would not have been able to minister to people online today if I ran away of making mistakes in the preaching and teaching. So it's absolutely essential that you got to face the music. Why is it good that you've been afflicted, according to Psalms 119.71, that I might learn? You know why it's good that you make mistakes? You learn better. There's a big difference with learning, with me teaching you through head knowledge, and there's a difference with actual experience. When you, actual exper when you have actual experience, you feel, and you're definitely going to remember what happened. But just through teaching, it all just, you do remember it, but it goes one year out the other. Yeah. You're going to forget it. How many of you remember what I taught last Sunday, for example? <laughs> but if you made a big boo-boo, big mistake last Sunday, how many of you will remember that one? Yeah. See, you learn better through experience. That's why mistakes are very important, because... You know the dumb mistake you make, and your flesh will never forget that feeling. And I mean the flesh. See, the flesh, that's why it's good that you go through this, because it crucifies the flesh. The flesh needs to be crucified. It needs to feel bad. How many times we want to please our flesh, make ourselves feel good? After you preach and teach, someone goes like this to you, shakes your hand, says, that's great preaching and teaching. How does that please your flesh? But if you preached an awful sermon and somebody came to you and said, that's an awful message, how many of you are going to remember that? Yeah. And how many of you are going to work really much harder after that right. to improve it? So mistakes can be used for the glory of God. Let's also look at uh, Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Now, this is very interesting what the Bible says concerning parents. Why does the Bible say we ought to listen from our parents? Because they went through something in life that you haven't yet, and they're able to teach you that. Proverbs 23, 22. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Now, why is that? The reason why is because as they grow older in life, what's going to happen is that they went through more things in life they remembered. They, let me tell you something, folks, is that parents remembered the dumb mistakes they made, and when they tell their kids not to do something, it's because they made a similar mistake themselves. And so they are, that makes the parents more determined for the kid not to do that. You know why parents are able to teach their kids that? Because they went through the mistake. So you know what happens when you go through the mistakes? You are able to teach, to help others. 
How many of you are able to help out addicts, for example, because of the mistakes you made? Because of the mistakes you made as an addict, you're better equipped mm -hmm. to teach those fellow addicts. Because you made the mistakes of a pastor, you're better equipped right. to teach other pastors. Because you made the mistakes in your job, in your work, you're better equipped to teach other workers, fellow workers. So that's why this is very important. How many teachers are able to teach in school because of the mistakes that they made in life? And they know how to communicate better with the students and the kids. Another thing about mistakes that you got to understand so you don't get discouraged is you're not the only one. Think about heroes. Didn't you know there are heroes in the Bible? Heroes make mistakes. Okay? Heroes make mistakes. You got to understand. Mm -hmm. Heroes make mistakes. And you got to understand that the Lord can use anybody for his glory. Really, Pastor? Look at Hebrews 11, if you don't believe me. Mm -hmm. The famous chapter of all the heroes of faith. This is a famous chapter on the heroes of faith. But look at their lives when we look through these heroes of faith. I'm going to point out these people's sins right here. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Look what God says about them. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 11, and we will start at verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. So Noah, he is included in the famous heroes of faith list. But Noah, he's the guy who got drunk. Yeah. He sinned by drinking. Right. He's the hero of faith? You're kidding me. Let's look at verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should receive after for an inheritance, obeyed. Abraham, he lied yeah. to Pharaoh. Right. And he did it twice. He went to the king of the Philistines right. and lied about his wife saying, she is my sister. I don't know how many of you husbands will do that. You know, she's my sister. <laughs> and I'm sure your wife would not be happy after that. But the thing is, see, Abraham lied twice. He's a hero of faith. Look at another example. Look at verse 9. The Bible says, verse 11, excuse me. Through faith also Sarah herself received, received strength to conceive seed. What, seriously? Sarah, hero of faith? She laughed about the promise. That she would bring forth children. Let's look at verse tw uh, 20. Verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. No way. You got to be kidding me. Isaac? Isaac doubted on what he ate. Is this really my son Jacob? Yeah. He that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Romans 14, 20 through 22. What about this guy? This guy's definitely... This guy definitely doesn't qualify. Verse 21, by faith, Jacob? Jacob. Wait, Jacob, this guy was a deceiver. Yeah. He's a liar. He stole the blessing. Yet he's a hero of faith. Look at verse 22. The Bible says, by faith, Joseph. Joseph, he lied, about, he lied to his brothers about his identity. Look at verse 23. By faith, Moses, he's a murderer. A murderer should not belong in the heroes of faith. Verse 30, notice it's Joshua. He complained before the Ark of the Covenant when he lost the battle at Ai. Look at verse 31, Rahab, a prostitute? You're serious. She's a hero of faith, a prostitute. Look at verse 32, Gideon, really? He built an ephod. He, be, he built an ephod. Verse 32, Barak, really? He's a coward. Yep. A woman had more guts than Barak, if you read your Bible. Verse 32, Samson, no way, he slept with prostitutes. He's a hero of faith. Uh -huh. Verse 32, Jephthah, he made a foolish oath. Verse 32, David, he committed adultery. Yeah. Verse 32, Samuel, he was fearful of Saul. And these were all heroes of faith. So if God can use David, who committed murder, adultery, why can't he use you? Yeah. How can he use Paul, who yeah. murdered and tortured Christians? Right, yeah. How can he use Moses, who's a murderer, to Come write on. the first yeah. five books of your Bible? And you're telling me he can't use you. That's right, he can. Amen. That should be encouraging. That should be encouraging. Another thing is 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We will close it right here. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. What you got to understand 
is that this is good for you. Why? Because God's grace puts you to humility. When you make mistakes, what's going to happen is that when the Lord raised you up, because through learning experience, you improve more and more and more. And when you become a great role model for people to look up to, you're going to remember the only reason why you went that high is because you made too many mistakes down there. And that will keep you humble. And I, how many pastors have I seen, which makes me upset, they've got great gift in preaching and teaching, but because of pride, that stinking yep. pride, yeah, that absolutely. they fell. I can tell you case after case yep. of pastors who fell because of pride. You know what keeps this preacher humble right here? Is he remembers the dumb, stupid mistakes that only he made that not even other people made. And when he remembers that, that will keep him humble. And that keeps you humble. Oh, that was a stupid mistake I made. Good for you. Now remember that feeling. Right. Now remember that shame before you feel good about yourself when you become a great guy one day. Yeah. Romans 8, 28. The, I have to write the verse right here because that's basically the fifth point. The fifth point is Romans 8, 28. Do you believe God can work all things together for good? If you truly believe that, then what you're going to realize is this. He can use even your mistakes for his glory. That's right. How so, pastor? Even in my sin? Yeah, he can even use your sin for his glory yeah. one day when you repent and get right with God. Mm -hmm. Really, pastor? Yeah. For example, you have a bad habit of smoking marijuana. You have, you're a heroin addict. One day, the Lord's going to use that for his glory where you can help other heroin addicts, where you can help out other marijuana smokers. Really, God can use my bad for good? Yeah, he can. He can use the mistake that you made in your preaching to bless some other person's life out there. He can do that as well. Charles Spurgeon, he once went through a really depressing situation in his life. And one day, he used that sad feeling to convey his message to the audience. When he preached to the audience, that sad feeling he had, the sermon sounded horrible, depressing. It was absolutely depressing. It was a horrible sermon. Disgusted by his misery, Spurgeon preached that he would never preach that kind of message again. But one time, there was a man who was, going, was about to go to an insane asylum. He heard that horrible preaching that Spurgeon preached. Mm. Preach, uh, the preacher preached through his misery, his depression, that sermon. And that maniac, depressed person who heard him preach, it rescued his life, made him sane. Five years later, Spurgeon saw that same maniac teaching in college wow. with the lecture. And you know what he was teaching the lecture on to his students? About how to handle depression. Amen. Praise the Lord. He learned that through Spurgeon's mistake. All things work together for good. That's good. I know that I have made many mistakes through preaching, teaching, and you could probably see it online too. You could probably see me during the fellowship time and what I did in your life. But I know for a fact all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Glory.